Now this question says, describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. Now, to be able to do this, okay, I'm going to take us to a topic called transformation. On that transformation, we'll break it down into, it will have subtopics, okay? We'll have reflection, we'll have reflection, we'll have translation, we have rotation, and we'll have enlargement. Now, let's start with tra transformation first of all. And the topic is transformation, okay? Now, this transformation, we'll talk about reflection. We've talked about enlargement. We'll talk about translation. And then we'll talk about reflection. Okay, we have reflection. Then we'll talk about rotation. Okay. Now, first of all, while, while we're explaining, we'll be drawing them. Now, for reflection. Okay, first of all, what's transformation? Transformation is just changing the shape or changing the both shape or size or direction of an object okay you just transform it into another form okay for example this question we're given this object was here before okay the a is this one okay now it now became this one this one no the shape wasn't changed at all you it, it just remained the same just that the direction was changed this is transformation so it just means changing okay transformation It means changing the well I'll say properties now okay oh okay let us mention the properties changing the shape direction and size of an object Okay, now under reflection, under reflection, let's say that we have this triangle. Okay, okay, it's actually rough. Okay, let's make it better. Let's have this triangle. This is a triangle now, okay? If we are asked to reflect it, reflection means actually placing something like a mirror here. Something like a mirror, okay? And then looking at the object through a mirror and, and writing it on the other part. Now, it's just moving it the same point, the same distance this object is from that mirror or your the placement of your mirror moving in that same distance to the other side okay now in reflection we have they could give you to reflect through x equal to maybe one or two or something or y equal to something then x equal to y then y equal to minus x okay now we're going to look at all four of them now it asks you to reflect through maybe x equal to one if this was your x axis now if you're given this object now this object is on on this quadrant okay this right quadrant and you're giving this object a b c okay you're you're told to reflect it at point x equal to one now okay no it's already on x equal to one maybe at point x equal to zero okay that along this line okay now we're told to reflect along x equal to zero when you're given an x value to reflect an object okay 
it means that you're you're going to use a diagonal mirror you're going to use a diagonal separation you use a straight line okay now for this one now on x equal to zero we're going to use a straight line that we drew okay now we'll find out that from here from this zero line to this side where the where b is okay it's just one unit or one square so we're going to calculate we're going to do the same thing for this side whatever you do on this side you do on this side now from here to here is b from here to here is going to be b prime now we're trying to form the image of the reflection now on this two again from here to here is a from here to here is going to be a prime you come here again and do a prime now from here to c is about one two three okay that's from here now one two three then from here to c is going to be one two three so this place is going to be your c prime okay now we're going to join the object now the join form is is going to be like this when you join you find out that it's the same as this but it's already facing it's facing this way okay now that's a reflection on point x equal to zero okay reflection on x equal to zero okay now from from what we've been asked the question we're asked is exactly the same thing as what we just did now and that's a reflection that's to tell us that this question is a reflection question because from here now putting your image your mirror image here or your mirror here you find out that from this space to this space is the same as from this space to this space so this is your first point now the second point is going to be one two three four four squares to the right now this, the second point will be four squares on to the left now one two three four four squares to the left and this one now is one square to the right this one is one square to the left so this is a reflection at x equal to zero that's the answer for this one reflection at point x equal to zero okay now if you are given a reflection okay at any point why even if the reflection okay was at uh maybe point x equal to one you still come to x equal to one and come here and place your mirror let's say this object did not come here okay let's say it was on x equal to two you still come here and place your mirror here that means the object to be on this other side okay the same way we measured for this one if the if the reflection was on this point that means for c c will be this is one one space to the left c will not be one space uh c prime will not be one space to the right that's this point then b is about one two three three points to the left now from here b will be one two three this will be your b prime okay now your a will also be somewhere here too we now join the shape this way okay this is at point x equal to one so whichever or x equal to two rather so whichever one they give you once they give you an x value just know that you're placing your mirror uh, vertically now if they give you a y value at point y equal to zero or at point y equal to in this place let's do point y equal to zero okay if it's at point y equal to zero is this line okay because this is the line at y is zero okay now this is the line now if they give you if they tell you to reflect this object at point y equal to zero that means for this point now we do it point by point we don't just take the whole object at once because if you do you can have errors so for this point now for this point b we'll have from here now it's one two so we'll come two up we'll come down one two two down this this should be your point b okay now for this one again it's two up so we'll come here two down for this point now is one two three four it's four up so we'll come down one two three four down you're seeing that the object has materialized the object has materialized this is at point x equal to or rather y equal to zero so when you're giving any y point okay 
any white giving any white point means that it's on is a horizontal line that you're going to use at that particular point okay if you're giving at y equal to one now or at y equal to three it's going to be this whole line you're going to make a line on y equal to three okay and then try to reflect this object the other way how many spaces do we have from y equal to three we have one two from y equal to three so up now you have one two this is where the first point will be it's just that way it's just as easy as that just reflection okay now if we have at point x equal to y point x equal to y is going to be a diagonal line or a straight diagonal line and it's going to pass through x equal to x x and y zero zero okay it's going to pass through x and y one one it's going to pass through x and y two two okay x and y three three just like that it's going to be a diagonal line passing through this point like this then wherever the object is on this side you reflect using and in the case of a diagonal okay let's just try and let's just try and draw the diagonal Let's just try and draw a diagonal line this way, okay? Now, if the object is here, if the object is here, okay, we're not going to be counting how many how many squares now, and come and put no. If we'll be counting how many uh, diagonals, we'll be counting objects, we'll be counting our squares diagonally, since it's a diagonal line. Remember when it was square, we we're counting the one square, two square, and things like that. But since this one is a diagonal line, we're going to be counting diagonally. You find that at this point, that's where this point is. Okay, let's call this A, B, and C. Okay, point C is here. So reflecting it diagonally, we're going to have point C prime here. Okay, now this point is here. So we'll find out how many spaces it is diagonally from the line this is one space diagonally this is two spaces diagonally okay so we're now going to do another diagonal space calculation two one and then two and this is going to be here this is going to be your a prime remember this is your c prime c prime is here okay now for b now We'll count how many diagonals it is from this line. This is one. Okay. Now this is one and a half. So we're going to count again. This is half and this is one. So it's going to be here. So we've seen that we've formed we formed the shape already. Diagonally. Now the mistake you could have made is as you mean you start counting squares. Now you have something like this now. Which is going to be completely wrong. But if you count using diagonal, since it's a diagonal line, so it's supposed to translate diagonally. Okay, you're going to have the correct shape. Now, if you also have y equal to minus x, the same way you did here, that's the same way, but it's going to be on this side. Okay, remember, it's going to have, it's going to be on if y is 1, x is minus 1. If y is 2, x is minus 2, just like that, just the diagonal line coming this way. y equal to minus x. Even if you have x equal to minus y, it's going to be x and minus y. It's going to be this way. Okay? Now, if you have x equal to minus y, then for every value of x, it will be a negative value of y. For every value of x, you have negative value of y. If you have, what else can you have? It's just the same thing. If it's x equal to minus y, the same thing if it's minus x equal to minus y for every negative value of x you have negative value of y and it's going to be on this quadrant okay now that's the way you do you handle reflection questions generally now now for enlargement enlargement actually means just increasing the size of the object okay now if the object was this way and we're asked to enlarge it it means increase the size of it now when they're asking you to enlarge okay they will either give you a scale factor 
and they will give you center of enlargement if you're just asked to enlarge ordinarily okay maybe you're asked to enlarge this object a this triangle a now enlarging it with scale factor 2 means whatever this is 1 so it is going to be 2 that will be here this is 1 it's going to be 2 that will be here and then you join your point okay now this is 2a I've enlarged the scale factor 2 but if this is a now okay and we're asked to enlarge the scale factor 2 and with at center B okay and this is your center now the same way we worked on reflection and we still make using points that's the same way we're going to do this now from this point now we we'll trace a line to this point to this apex and draw it out from this point we we'll trace a line again to this other apex and draw it out now from this line again we we'll trace another line to this apex okay and we'll do, do it with that ruler so it to be more straightforward now we we'll draw it out now after doing this we're going to measure from here to here we will measure it let's say it's two then since we're, we're enlarging by scale factor of two multiply by two that's four now measure from here to four let's say it's here and that will be our point first point okay now we we'll measure from here to here let's say it's three okay now we're going to measure multiply three that we got here by two that's our scale factor that's six you now measure from here to six let's say it's here okay now if you measure from here to here let's say it's four okay we will now multiply two the same scale factor by four that's eight and measure out eight on this line let's say it's here so to now get our ob uh, square a uh, rectangle rather enlarged rectangle it's not be something like this now this is not how it is normally i'm just trying to use the, the uh, this freehand sketch and show you okay now after measuring out you have something like this and it will just be like this now this object now is your 2a at the center there are times when you have an object and you have a center inside of it you can have a center inside of it now if you have a center inside of it from this point okay make out your line from this point make out your line from this point make out your line okay now when you measure from here to here let's say it's one your scale factor is two you just multiply by two and measure from here to two and that will be your first point now if you measure from always use your points as point of reference okay because it helps you it helps you to make to to have a more accurate object now if you measure from here to here and it's three okay so your scale factor is two, so you multiply by three that's six you measure six here now that's you measure from here and measure to you six and then you make a mark now if you measure from here to here and it's maybe 1.5 1.5 times 2 is 3 you know you always multiply with your scale factor now you measure from here to 3 let's say it's here then you just join your join your points and that will be your enlarged rectangle or enlarged triangle rather okay now even if you are giving a point here if you're giving a point here still trace this point to this place trace this point to this place okay that means one of your points the the you just place was a that means the a of the enlarged one will still be here since it's the same point then when you now measure maybe from here to here and it's two and large the scale factor is two, is two so you multiply that's four maybe you make a mark here four for this one again this one is maybe two you make a mark here four you just join this this is your enlarged so what i'm just trying to say is no matter the point you're giving no matter where you're giving the point okay just make a draw a line from that point you're giving to one one apex or one of the points of the object and extend keep drawing a line to you get to all the apex then after doing that you now keep measuring from when you measure from here to the to the original object you now multiply by the scale factor and measure that that product you got on the line and then make a mark from there when you do that do that for all the other points you'll be able to join and get the enlarged enlarged form you're looking for it's the same thing for reduction if you're giving a, a big object and asked to reduce when you measure you divide by the scale factor 
instead of multiplying so that's about that's it about enlargement now we have translation okay translation if you have an object like this what translation actually means is in translation you don't change the shape okay don't change the shape you just move objects according to the vector parameters given to you for example you are told to translate these objects three places or in three and minus one form vector form okay now this is the, the one on top represents the x value the one under represents the y value okay now translating this means taking this object the way it is three places to the right and one place down okay Let, let's call this your a and b and this your c okay now taking a three places to the right you have one two three now this is your a here one one place down that's minus one here so this is where your a is supposed to be you call that a prime okay now taking b now three places to the right you have one two three and one place down here you have here okay taking c three places to the right you have one two three then one place down is here okay now this is your c prime this is your b prime now this is your your translated form of the object now what translation tries to do is that it takes it from that position where it is the same way it is unchanged to another position okay now that's what translation tries to do so no matter what you're given just take the same form the same method working with points okay and translate the and changing the position of the object from one from the original position to the next position now that's it about translation now we have rotation okay now rotation what is rotation all about rotation as the name implies means turning an object okay through a particular number of degrees uh, through a particular degree rather now when you're trying to when you're trying to handle rotations there are some things you need to know okay now let's call this our y axis and let's call this our x axis and let's label this one two three and this four okay and let's label this minus one minus two minus three and minus four let's call this one call this two call this three call this four call this five let's call this minus one call this minus two call this minus three call this minus four call this minus five okay now on this on this plane now x and y plane we're going to have an object that we want to rotate let's say we have this object okay maybe a triangle again i love using triangles because they are the most basic they are the most basic figures that I use in GCSE math. Now, using this triangle to rotate. Now, if you're asked to rotate this triangle 90 degrees, okay, just bear in mind that when you're rotating 90 degrees clockwise, anyways, you rotate this way, okay. Now, this way 90 degrees. Now, when you rotate this object 90 degrees, instead of this AB being here, it's going to be this way, okay. It's going to be this way then instead of bc being this way it's going to be this way just know that you're turning it is that is like turning it okay Ima imagine in your mind that you're turning it so you turn it this way now b is on 2.5 this is on okay this is on 1.5 this is on 2.5 okay now rotating this now whatever if you're rotating it 180 degrees okay this one just know that this one is going to be this way and then it will be on a different quadrant that's here you know when you're rotating it 90 degrees it's here 90 degrees is going to be here okay but here will now be up now a basic way that you can always use to know it is whatever is on whatever 
is on the y axis it's to, to be on the x axis this way okay that's for example b was on point 1.5 on the y axis it's going to be on point 1.5 on the x axis okay and then 1.5 and 1 1.5 and 1 is going to be here okay the x will take the y value the y will take the x value now c was on 2 okay it was on 1.5 and 2 so you still have 1.5 and 2 okay this is your c this is your b okay remember i said this one will be this way a b will be this way now b okay i've done b and c a was on 2.5 and 1 you come here 2.5 is here and 1 you come here write this one so you find out that doing this this is a this is c and this is b a b that was this way is now like this b c that was this way is now like this that's from here now now this is rotation of 90 degrees okay now if you're told to rotate 180 degrees know that this this one will come this way first and then come this way that means a b or b a will now be this way okay but in an upside down fashion this one will come will come this way first and then to come this way so bc will be up okay now if you're told to rotate 180 degrees instead of being here it's going to come here and come down here it's just like rotating 90 degrees two times okay now doing this again whatever is on x is going to be on y or whatever is on if it was on y here okay instead of being on x it's going to be on instead of being on positive x it's going to be on negative x okay now for example this one now to be on the safe side is actually wiser for you to rot rotate this imaginary rotate this here and still come down and rotate it this way okay that's to complete the one 180 now for example since this one was already rotated this way and you have remember what's on x will be on what's on y will be on x okay minus one for y and then 1.5 for x you come this way and what minus one for y so here will be minus one for x along this line then 1.5 okay so 1.5 on the y axis that's x will be y y will be x okay now for a it was 2.5 2.5 and minus 1 so still on the same minus 1 then 2.5 here now for c c was minus 2 so you come to minus 2 and 1.5 minus 2 and 1.5 so it's going to be here now you're going to have a new rotated object 180 degrees rotated object like this now you know this c was minus 2 so this is your C. B was 1.5. So this is your B and this is your A. Okay. As I said earlier that if you're rotating 180 degrees, this one will move, go this way and now go this way. So you see AB is now this way. Okay. And BC is now this way. And AC is now this way. So this is how you basically handle rotation. I've talked about reflection enlargement translation and rotation now another thing about rotation is they can just give you about a point now when they give you about a point just imagine yourself turning it that way okay you turn it either clockwise or anti-clockwise anyone they give you at all with this explanation i've broken down you'll be able to understand it perfectly you have to know why when you're turning it the one that will face where it's supposed to face after turning it the one that will be where it's supposed to be so that's it for transformation.